I'm Alistair Allen with Make Magazine, and we're here talking to Chris Anderson at MakerCon. How, how are you, Chris? Good. Um, so you said during your talk today that technology was moving too fast for really people to move between Maker and Maker Pro anymore. Mm. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, yeah. So I got started in 2007 at the beginnings, and we got started with Arduino and you know bags of boards and you know two-layer. It was it was it was easier then. Yep. Um, I think what we're seeing is that um, just the uh, the Shenzhen model of quite sophisticated consumer electronics, you know, sophisticated design, uh, manufacturing, etc. That's that's become the standard um, these yep. days. And and those you know the good news is that those chips are available to everybody. But the bad news is that that's the level you have to you have to work. And you know when you look at like something like a Pebble, um, right, you know it you this level of industrial design and consumer electronics approach is kind of what you need to succeed on Kickstarter as yep. well. And you can't just kind of you don't get six years to figure this out. You kind of figure it out in six months, which means that um, the organic process of moving from maker to kind of you know slight entrepreneurship, you know better entrepreneurship, maker pro, etc. You know the, the the path that I followed. Um, you just don't have time to do that anymore. You got to go straight into proper funding, proper hiring, contract manufacturing, get it out there. So you you went through a, a number of factors you saw back in 2007 mm -hmm. that that led you into 3DR that to actually to make these sort of things. What sort of factors do you see today that are the, the things that are trending? The things that are really so back then the big things were you know 3D printing and Arduino and sensor you know some the early MEM sensors. Today we're seeing system on chip um, innovation with things like um, you know uh, you know Linux Linux boards for nine dollars with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, we're seeing um, some very interesting work with materials. Um, uh, there's something called Volterra, which is a um, a 3D printer that uses um, conductive and non-conductive inks for PCB fabbing. Um, I think that uh, in general, Linux has become has become sort of um, now mainstream again in the embedded space. It, it never worked on the desktop, yep. um, but you know, once it once it took off on phones as the core of the iOS and Android, we're now starting to see it spread as a as a, you know the, the dominant platform for the embedded space, and that means that. Suddenly, we have access to all that code and libraries and algorithms that have already been written for Linux, and the whole Linux community are now part of the hardware um, community. That simply because the chips are now so cheap and powerful that run that stuff, that we're all Debian hackers today. And you describe that as the the peace dividend of the the phone wars, of the, of the smartphone wars. Yeah, yeah. The basically, if you look at Moore's law going on in mem sensors and cameras and GPS modules and wireless, etc. You know, nothing's moving faster than what's going on in your pocket um, with, 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 with phones because of the investment, the economies of scale, the Apples and Googles, et cetera. And as a result, just the, just the, you know, the chips that are available to us essentially for, for free are, are extraordinary. And you can't help but kind of follow that path because that's where the leverage is the greatest. Yeah. So you said that today, uh, you're saying here even that today you don't think you can move from a maker to a maker pro really very easily. Do you see that ever happening again? Do you see us going into a place where you can do that again? Mm -hmm. And if so, what sort of time scale do you think that's going to happen over? Do you think it's a 10 year away or a 20? Well, well by the way, uh, the maker movement was never designed to be an industrial you know, yeah. revolution. It was oh designed yeah. to, you know, to put powerful tools in the hands of regular people. And it succeeded brilliantly at that and continues to do so. So the fact, so if the maker movement reverts to more of a tinkerer, hobbyist, you know, Night, you know, nighttime, and you know, vocation, not for avocation rather than vocation. Not a tragedy. Um, there was just a brief moment where a lot of companies spun out of that, and the question is, what would it take for that to happen again? Yeah. Um, that is a good question. Well, it may be that so 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 we had 20 years of software innovation with the web and all that kind of stuff, and then there was this period of hardware innovation when hardware got hot, and we call that the maker movement. Yeah. Um, now the hardware looks like software again. It's running Linux, it's running kind of operating systems that look like, like smartphones, and maybe we're going to be writing apps for this new generation of hardware. So maybe you know the, the Maker Pro will be writing you know apps for your for wearables or apps for smartwatches of various sorts or drones or things like that, and it'll it'll go through that you know hardware software pendulum swing. We'll go back to software. I mean, you, you do see that a lot in the computing industry, the repeating of the cycles. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I can see that could work. So you, you yourself hit the cycle right. You, you, you're now a real company, a big mm. company, $100 million funding round. Mm. Where do you see a company like that fitting in with the, the new trends? How do you see adopting the, the trends that are coming out of the maker movement, perhaps? Well, we're going to look as much like a Chinese consumer electronics company as possible. So a big factory in, in, in Shenzhen and just basically you know, recognizing that the that this leverage of the supply chain and manufacturing there is just 
un incomparable. Um, but we're also going to look as much like Google as possible, which is to say, you know, an Android-like like operating system. So we think we have, you know, on the hardware side, you know, we're all we're turning Chinese. On the software side, we're turning into a, you know, we're using our maker roots of community and ecosystem and, you know, openness to our advantage. And we think that's, you know, the one way that we who kind of came out of the open source world can compete with very sophisticated, aggressive Chinese consumer electronics companies is by, is by doing partnering better, yep. by, by using community to our advantage. Because we think that fundamentally, the only way to beat a company is with a collective of companies, and platforms are just that. That's awesome. Thanks for talking to us, Chris. Thank you.